Hello guys, this is Daniel and welcome to a new video in our series about blockchain programming in Python. Today we are going to start with the main topic that motivates us to use Python and to use Brownie for our blockchain development, for our Web3 development, and that is the robustness that Python offers for testing. Uh, for that, let's review our contract first very fast. So what we have here is that we have our contract guest number. So we have uh, the address of the player. And this one is des destined to receive a payment. We have the different states of the contract. It can be either an open or a complete state. And it's going to be open when it is deployed. And it's going to be complete when someone guesses correctly the secret number and the contract basically paid it its balance to someone. Then we have the secret number that it's going to be stored by the contract. And we have the balance, which has to be um, changing according to what happens in the life of the contract. We have a constructor that takes a secret number. This constructor verifies that Whoever is deploying the contract is paying the amount of ETH needed to deploy the contract, which is 10 ETH. And uh, we have a function to get the balance of the contract and the most important, the function to play the contract. So whenever uh, someone plays the contract, what happens is that the balance of the contract have to be increased by one because when a person plays, it's depositing one ether into the contract. But if that person guesses the number correctly, then the amounts of funds in the contract are deposited to that uh, person ETH address. And it's also um, the contract is uh, reset to be in a complete state. So that's what uh, the contract does. So we are going to try to test those behaviors by using Python. And that's what we are going to do today. So for that, let's go to our... Um, cd uh, guess number which is the main uh, folder in our project and here we're going to do touch a test guess number dot pi and this has to be created in the test folder so we're going to do test slash test guess number dot pi we create that one and here under test we should have gotten that file created so we have it over here now we are going to start creating our test right so there are a uh, several things that we need to do first we need to import the libraries that we are going to use and for this specific purpose that is testing we need to import the pi test uh, library which is the library that is leveraging all uh, the tools for our testing and from brownie we are going to import several components we are going to import the function that allows us to send uh, ETH as text and then translate it away we are going to import accounts we are going to import guess number so that's it and uh, for some reason it's showing this uh, in this fashion it's because we forgot to do the import statement here so we've got everything that we need uh, today we're going to be uh, creating a function to test the uh, actual behavior in the contract when someone gets the number uh, wrongly so we're going to do a function here are we going to call it play wrong guess we are going to close it for now and we're going to do return and uh, return and this is going to be the main function there is another function that we are going to uh, do later which is going to be def test play right guess this is the one that we're going to reserve for the next video in the series and as you notice, either to interact with the contract sending a wrong guess or a right guess, we need to have a contract deploy in our blockchain environment, right? And we have our Ganache accounts here. Our Ganache environment is created. 
Let's go back to Visual Studio. And the other thing that we need is to have the contract, the guest number contract de deployed to that Ganache network. And for that, that's something that we can do as we were doing in the previous video when we deployed that contract to our, um, through the script that we created in the video, which I have here, deploy guest number. But uh, we will have to repeat it twice, right? Because we're having two functions here that have to have that contract to interact with. So instead of doing that, we're going to do something uh, very interesting that PyTest allows us, which is creating a function, which is going to run, and its result can be passed as a parameter to other functions. So in that way, we don't have to repeat ourselves and repeat that deployment. So let's do it. And for that, we, need, we are going to start with a decorator. And we are going to call this one PyTest fixture. Under that fixture label, we are going to create the function that is going to be returned to the other functions to uh, avoid the situation where we have to repeat ourselves. So we're going to do guess number. And uh, this function, the only thing that is going to do is return the deploy uh, object of the guess number contract. So we're going to do return guess number. And this is basically the same thing that we did in the previous video. We're going to do deploy. We are going to say that the secret number is going to be seven. And we are going to create the dictionary that we need to uh, send the deployment. Uh, since we are going to do it here for testing, we are just going to uh, leverage to the fullest our Ganache environment, and we are just going to refer to the account by its index, and the uh, Brownie automatically is going to use the account, and it's going to sign the transactions properly because it knows that all of those accounts are testing accounts. So we're going to use from accounts, and we're going to do a, the deployment for a, from account zero. Let's do it that that's easy. And then we are going to send the value of a, then ether, which is what it costs to deploy this contract, and it's actually the price that it's deposited in the contract itself. And uh, this is the transaction for deploying the contract. So. This is a store in this function over here. Since we already have it, then we can just pass it to this other function. So this is going to be passed like this, and this is passing the fixture, the fixture. And we can refer then to that uh, a specific object in our testing, which is what we are going to do right now. So what is going to happen when someone guesses the answer wrongly. Well, it's going to happen that his balance of ETH is going to be decreased by one because he has to pay one ETH to play. It's going to happen that the contract is going to get its balance increased by one ETH and it's going to happen that the contract is not going to change its state from open to complete. And the way that these states are created in Solidity are kind of like uh, indexes. So index zero is open and index one is complete. Um, how do we test that? We first have to uh, store the initial values of all of those uh, variables that we need to check uh, in their current value before the player plays. And then after he plays, we make the comparisons if everything changed according to the logic that the contract should have. So we're going to do that with uh, these variables here. We're going to create a variable that is going to be called pre-contract balance equals two. And right now we're going to keep it open. And we're going to create another value that is going to be another variable that is going to be called pre-player balance. Also, we're going to keep it open for now. So let's start to define uh, what these are. 
So pre-contract balance for that, we need to have the address. Uh, we need to have the balance of the contract as it is currently before the player plays, right? So we are going to do guess number, which is the object that we got from the fixture. This is the contract, the value of the contract, and it's referenced already to the blockchain because we are in the same script, and we're going to call the function get balance. So this will give us the balance of the contract. For a player balance, we have to decide which account is going to play. And let's say that a uh, account number uh, one is going to play. So accounts one balance, we get his current balance before he plays. So we have that. Now that we have these two values, we need this guy to play, right? So we need to interact with the contract in a way that we send the play interaction. We call the play function with this specific address that is playing right now. So let's do it. We are going to do guess number and we're going to do a, no, this is a mistake. Guess number is the name of the object. Guess number. And we're going to do play. And play takes two parameters. It takes the secret number. So it's a wrong guess. So right now, let's say number six. And a, we need an address for from the player. We are playing with account number one. So we are going to do that. A, uh, account again so we're going to do accounts uh, one that address and these are the two parameters that the contract takes and it is defined by solidity here in this function guest number which is an integer and the address of the player whoever is playing so we're calling those two but as you remember to interact with all uh, contracts in brownie we need to send a dictionary that defines the parameters, not of the functions that we're calling, but of the transaction. And we need to define the dictionary here as well. This is non, uh, no exception to that. So we need to do a from, and then whoever is playing is the uh, guy that we should be submitting this transaction from. So we're going to say from accounts and one, and then we are going to uh, send the other key on this um, dictionary is value and the value that he is submitting is one ether and having uh, created that call to the contract we are going to compare then what is the value of the contract balance and the player balance after the player made made a wrong address so for that we use a keyword that it's very familiar for testing uh, that is called assert and assert uh, just means that this state of the world should be of this fashion and if that assertion fails then the test is going to fail so we are going to need uh, three assertions right we need an assertion regarding the contract balance we need an assertion regarding the player balance and we need an assertion regarding the state of the contract. So let's do assert uh, guess number get balance should be equal to pre contract balance, which we uh, have here. And what we assigned to pre-contract balance was what was the value of the contract before the player played. And if the player made a wrong guess, then what happened is that this balance should be increased by one ETH, right? So we have way, we are just going to send it like this, plus one ether. So that's the case for the uh, balance of the contract. For the balance of the player, we have to have a guess, uh, no, we need to do accounts. And the player is player number, uh, is the account number one. So account number one, balance, 
it's equal to the same thing that we had above, pre-player balance, but in this case, it's gonna be minus way. This is just to convert the value of ETH in way. We need the third assertion, and the third assertion is that the state of the contract should and change. So we're going to do assert guess number core state, and here we're just calling the value of this uh, variable here, which is a public variable, core state, which can have these values here, open or complete, and these are like indices, so open is zero. We go back and we say core state equals a, not here, equals zero. So that is the assertion that we were missing. So we have uh, test the three uh, scenario, the three uh, aspects that we should test if the player uh, guess the number wrongly. So to run this, we are going to do the following. We are going to do Browning test. And uh, yeah, I mean that, I mean Browning test. Okay, so we got the results here. It's telling me that two tests passed. And actually what happened is that only one test passed because this other test is empty. And uh, this is the way testing works. If we change the testing uh, values, if we say uh, something that uh, we are just gonna break the test right now because this is kind of like uh, putting the opposite functions here, but just for uh, example sake, if we have that and we said brownie test, then it's gonna tell me that those assertions are gonna fail. And it tells me that the test failed and one test passed, which is the one that is empty, and let's check what were the mistakes. And here is telling me what were the assertions that failed. It's showing us the first one that failed, which was the balancing way. This one doesn't hold, of course, because we changed it to the wrong uh, logic. So let's return it back to plus one way in the case of the contract and minus plus one ether in the case of the balance contract and the minus one ether in the case of the player. And let's do Brownie test again, and our test passed. So that's it guys, that's the way that you test your contracts with uh, Python Brownie. Uh, this is a very useful framework, uh, precisely because of this functionality. In our next video, we're going to do the uh, assertions regarding when the player gets the number right. And here is where we're going to do uh, some fixing in our contract because in that uh, case is where we have one error. So thank you very much guys. If you like Python and you like blockchain programming, follow this series and please smash that like and follow and subscribe to the Morales channel. Thank you very much. Until the next video.